the Brisbane and Queensland property markets are apparently no longer good markets to invest in, at least according to this article. What a load of bollocks. Today, I'm going to go through this article, I'm going to highlight the mistakes that this investor made so that you don't make the same ones. I'm going to look at the conclusions and why they're wrong so that you don't get misled. And then finally, I'm going to give you the data and facts about what's actually happening in the Brisbane and Queensland property markets. Let's go. Hello, it's Nero here and consider this episode a warning about some of the total nonsense you're going to see in the mainstream media in 2024. I lost $4,500 last month, why Queensland is no longer an investor's market. An investor who lost $4,500 on his portfolio last month says the risks associated with buying a rental home in Queensland were no longer worth the rewards. Now, let's have a look at the what he actually bought. Mr. Barry sold a two bedroom, two bathroom unit in Ascot for $680,000 in October of 2023. Now, Ascot is a really, really nice suburb in Brisbane. Many people will tell you it's one of the nicest suburbs, but most people in Ascot don't want to live in a unit there. They want to live in a house. So even though Ascot is a great suburb, because this investor made the wrong choice in terms of what type of dwelling to buy, he chose to buy an apartment rather than a house, he then struggled to see the capital growth that he was expecting, plus he struggled from a rental perspective as well. And I've seen this in multiple markets around the country. For example, during the 2012 to 2017 boom in Sydney, I met an investor who bought a property in the North Shore of Sydney. It was in a great location, great suburb, property prices were rising, and yet he was struggling to get his property rented. He'd often go through weeks and weeks without a tenant. And it took me a while to work out what was going on. He'd bought in a suburb where most people living there were living in four bedroom and five bedroom properties. He'd bought a two bedroom penthouse apartment. Sure, it was a nice apartment. Sure, it was close to all the amenities. But the fact is, it was the wrong dwelling type for the suburb that he chose to invest in. And then he struggled from a cash flow perspective. So as an investor, it's not just about finding the right areas to buy in. You need to know the right pockets within that area and ensure you're buying the right type of property for that area. And how do you know? You need to know what other owner occupiers are buying in that particular market. And as an investor, buy the same type of property. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this investor has learned that particular lesson because after selling his Ascot unit, his latest purchase was a three bedroom, one bathroom house in the Perth suburb of Forest Hills. Cost $450,000 and is tenanted on a two year lease for $460 a week. But again, when you look at the Perth market, most people who are moving there want to live in a house. That's what's in demand right now. That's why in multiple suburbs around Perth, when you see a house on the market, it's often gone within as little as three days. If it takes seven days to sell, that's actually a long time in the Perth market. So when you see headlines like this, and when you read through other investors' experience and telling you why a certain area is a bad area to invest in, you've always got to put your detective hat on and try and work out, well, what is it that he or she did wrong? It's often not what they mention in the article. It often comes down to the suburb choice, uh, buying a property that wasn't in line with their risk profile or their goals, or buying a property that wasn't right for that particular market. But when you look at the Brisbane market though, people who will tell you that this is a market that has reached its top, property prices won't rise, rents are going to fall, the data shows that they're clearly wrong. First of all, let's have a look at what's driving property prices upwards in Brisbane. CoreLogic Head of Research Eliza Owen said Brisbane's median property value of almost $800,000 remains attractive to a wide range of people. It's still got a relatively affordable price point with more value for money than what we see in the major southern capital cities, she said. I'll go through that comparison in just a moment. 
Now, there's also been the very intense levels of interstate migration. It has pulled back a little to about 30,000 people over the year to June 2023, but that's still almost double the decade average of interstate migration levels. That, coupled with the return of overseas migration, is really driving up demand pressures across Brisbane. Now, I just mentioned demand pressures, and if you've been following any of my work, you'll know that I often talk about the fact that property price direction is determined by demand over supply. So we clearly know from CoreLogic that demand is increasing. What about supply? Well, have a look at this. Here we have a chart that's showing you just one segment of the greater Brisbane market. And what we're looking at here is a number of listings. And what you can see here is that from 2022, listings sort of went up until the midpoint of 2022. Okay, and then after that, what happened? Listings have started to, to fall. And here we are in the early part of 2024, and listings are actually on their way down. So what does that tell you? We have a situation where demand is increasing because more and more people are moving into Brisbane and moving into Queensland from interstate migration and overseas migration, but the number of listings, the number of properties available for sale is actually falling. But then what about new properties being built, you might ask? After all, historically in Queensland, it has been an area where there is lots and lots of new properties being built. Well, again, have a look at the data. Here we have data from Australian Bureau of Statistics, and what it shows us is that total dwelling approvals fell 28.5% in Queensland as at February of this year. So we have more demand from people moving into Queensland, fewer and fewer listings, which means less and less people are actually selling their properties, and we're building fewer properties to the tune of 28.5%, which is significant. It's no wonder then the property prices in Brisbane and multiple places around Queensland are rising and rising quite significantly. In fact, when we look at this next chart, which tracks property price growth in Brisbane versus Melbourne, you can see that the red line, which is Brisbane property price growth, has far outperformed Melbourne's. Melbourne property prices seem to be really going flat, whereas look at Brisbane property prices, they're taking off. It's no wonder then that so many people, me included, expect that the Brisbane median property price will eventually exceed Melbourne's median property price. So ultimately, the Brisbane property market and many areas around regional Queensland are extremely strong right now. Property prices are set to keep rising regardless of what you might see in the media from time to time. The rental returns are also much stronger in Queensland than they are in many parts of New South Wales and Victoria. So if you're thinking about buying in Brisbane, if you're thinking about buying in certain areas around Queensland, yes, you do need to do your due diligence. You need to avoid the floodplains, for example, but the data shows that property prices are set to keep rising in multiple areas around Brisbane and Queensland.